Today on Great Places Seen, it's life after loss. My solo journey begins with a visit to bridges from our past, lots of free-flowing water, and a special ladder for future generations to climb. Perhaps exciting enough to flip over. Time to uncover the tab and get it ready for the road. It seems to be a personal travel tradition, rain. It's also a bittersweet time. Springtime life is emerging as I have to begin moving on following my wife's death from cancer. This is the first chance I've had to check out the trailer in months because of overwhelming events at home. All thankfully seems to be in order as I hitch for a quick weekend trip to dewinterize and have the trailer ready for eventual travel later in the summer. It feels so strange to be doing this alone. In fact, I've never taken the trailer on the road without my wife. Life is always changing and evolving. It's definitely a time I have to adapt, certainly the biggest and most abrupt change I've faced. Today's destination is Patapsco Valley State Park, just west of Baltimore. The park has just opened for the camping season. I'm also taking advantage of lower middle of the week rates, well, since I can now. Patapsco Valley is large, as long as neighboring Baltimore is, and the park is made of several different sections. There's a lot of ground to cover here, but I'll stop at only a couple of highlights. Hey, it gives me plenty of reasons to come back and see more. Right now, I want to see my campsite. It's potable and it's portable. So here I'm filling up the uh, fresh water tank for the first time this season using a uh, flow meter to tell me how much water is going in. Well, roughly at the 12 uh, gallon mark. Yeah, we're getting there. All right, at the uh, 20 gallon mark. Yeah, we're up to good. We're almost there. I also brought five gallons of water with me, so I don't need to top it off. I think I'm gonna cut it off here, just below 25. All right, so here's my uh, site for today and tomorrow, 407. Looks to be nice and wide and easy to back into. We shall see. I haven't done that since last year. <laughs> so one never knows on the first try, right? Not too bad. I'm also due for a couple of maintenance items, repacking wheel bearings and flushing and refilling the Aldi heat system with glycol, which I hope to do at this year's new camp rally in Ohio even though I have no reservations. Those are the, really the only two maintenance items that I need to do uh, on the trailer. And another reason why I want to crash U-Camp 24, <laughs> I think they'll let me in. What do you think? That's not until June. So uh, we'll see. I have obviously things to do uh, at home uh, because I, I have to deal with my... Uh, wife's uh, affairs um, you know they're, they're, it just takes time as any of you that have gone through the loss of a spouse knows so that's what I'll be doing uh, before June and then I guess my next real outing will be uh, June and hopefully you camp uh, the, the first time that I really start taking the trailer out and and uh, traveling again um, so this weekend, uh, hopefully the weather will, will let up a little bit and uh, I can go explore this park. Uh, from what I read online, it's a very interesting park. A lot of history and a lot of firsts happen here at uh, Patapsco Valley, uh, just west of Baltimore. Uh, so we're gonna check it out. State parks are really cool. There's a lot of history in state parks that uh, kind of fly under the radar because you know, national parks, you, you kind of know what's going on there. There's a lot of scenery, uh, you know, certainly uh, there in, in, in areas that uh, have become well known to all of us, but uh, state parks uh, often have a unique history of their own. 
And uh, in the coming uh, two days, uh, we're gonna explore this a little bit and see what we find. It's time to dewinterize. Uh, the furnace is on here, so hopefully it's not a little too noisy. Uh, what I'm gonna do before I actually switch over to the water in my tank is I've gone back to uh, the winterize mode so that I can siphon water from this uh, five gallon container, which happens to fit very nicely in a milk crate. It makes it very easy to carry around because if you've ever tried to carry five gallons of water, it's pretty darn heavy. I think it's eight pounds per gallon, so that's 40 pounds. Yeah, milk crate really is uh, the thing to have. So all I'm gonna do is uh, use this water to uh, flush out the pink antifreeze for my lines. I'm going to just uh, take the cap off. I'm going to put in the uh, siphon hose. I can turn on the water pump inside or out here. Uh, I think what I'll do first is uh, turn it on inside. I'm going to uh, turn on the water pump right here. And I'm going to start running all the faucets hot water and uh, cold water. So it's uh, cold water right now. And there's all the lovely pink antifreeze in there. So once it runs clear, as it is now, you know, I'll also do the uh, hot water side. Let that run through until it's clear. All right, kitchen sink is done. On to the bathroom sink. On to the hot water. And that is looking clear. Two more to go. We've got the uh, shower. Turn it this way and make sure it's pointing down because <laughs> otherwise I'm going to spray myself, right? Maybe I'll just put it down here for the time being. Turn it on. And go the other direction. a little more pink. Thank you antifreeze for keeping my lines safe. Okay now uh, with the bathroom done I'm going to move on to the outside shower and I'll be all finished. I, I can switch the water over to uh, my fresh tank. All right with the flush done I'm just going to uh, switch this now to dry camping. Since I have uh, water in my tank, and now that's going to put water into my Aldi system, and I can uh, heat my water very quickly, which would be nice. Is this difficult? No. Is it a chore? Yes. But it's not a big chore. Winterizing, dewinterizing, it's pretty darn simple. One tip with the Aldi system is uh, that I heard from UCAMP about every week you should drain your hot water from the uh, low point outside because the uh, tank here needs what they call a water jacket. The water jacket basically is you, you just need a little bit of uh, air in the top of the tank there so that water can expand. As you drive down the road and everything shakes, uh, that water jacket disappears. It just fills up with water and there's not room for it to expand properly. And uh, that can damage your Aldi system. So about every week, uh, while you're on the road, go ahead and drain from the low point and then you'll restore that water jacket in your Aldi system. If you have a tab, right? Uh, the furnace is nice, but uh, I prefer using uh, heat from the Aldi system. 
now that it has water in it, I'll turn it on. Uh, to me, the uh, heat pump is not quite as efficient as uh, Aldi is. So uh, this claims it's 55 degrees in here now. And uh, what'll happen is the water will heat up and, uh, and also the glycol. And I'll, I'll begin to get radiant heat throughout the trailer, which is really nice. It works very well. My TV viewing really is minimal when I'm out in the trailer, but still, I like to put an antenna up and see what's uh, available in each area. Looks like uh, we found 81 so far. Uh, Patapsco Valley is very close to Baltimore, so it, it's no wonder there are a lot of stations here. Yeah, I don't think anything that really interests me. <laughs> I'll buy a vowel. Well, good thing I don't have to deal with that. And look, I get a weather warning too. A flood warning in Howard County, which is, well, where I happen to be right now. Uh, but I, I spoke with the uh, uh, park ranger and he told me that uh, Really, they don't expect any issues here in the park, even though it can be prone to flooding. Uh, it should be okay. And tomorrow's supposed to lighten up, which would be nice. Well, you may have wondered what these are. They're actually um, camping air mattresses. As I have not bought a real mattress for this uh, camper yet, uh, I'm using these and actually they work pretty well. So uh, one of my uh, purchases this year is going to be a uh, Honest to goodness mattress uh, for the trailer and also uh, an awning. It's a rookie mistake. I didn't open the roof fence overnight and now I have condensation. Fortunately, it'll dry fairly fast, but it's everywhere. Also have small USB fans that help. Well, shades of U Camp 2023. Uh, there's a little hailstorm going on here. Not very big pellets, but you can see nonetheless uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of sleet, hail. Did not expect that. And minutes later, some blue sky is back. I have moments where I'm at a total loss. After being busy with things, I suddenly realize again what has happened, and I have to stop and regroup my thoughts. It's just really strange being out here on my own, but I'll get used to it. Well, that's probably the best I've slept in the last uh, three weeks since my wife's passing. Um, very nice and quiet out here and um, just a good getaway. Um, let's go explore. It's a park of many firsts. For me, the first arrival without a reservation, first time on my own, and first time at Patapsco Valley. You might say, that's a very stout building. The Avalon section of the park includes what used to be known as Relay, an area where the B&O Railroad came out of Baltimore and was the primary link with Washington, D.C. before heading west across the country. The builders in the early 1800s wanted their structures to stand the test of time. So over the early miles, there were many examples of fine stonework. That standard became too cumbersome and expensive, 
and the ideal gave way to more practical railroad building as the push westward continued. But as a monument to their efforts, many of those early structures built in a very flood-prone area do indeed remain today. If you have ever driven on I-95 south of Baltimore, then you've passed the Thomas Viaduct, named after Philip E. Thomas, the first president of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, the country's first commercial railroad. This unique bridge has survived many floods and has outlasted more modern structures. Completed in 1835, the Thomas Viaduct was among the largest stone-arched bridges in addition to being the first multi-arched curved stone railroad bridge in the world. The 704-foot curved bridge is 66 feet high and connects Relay to Elk Ridge on eight elliptical arches. Though critics thought it incapable of bearing its own weight, the viaduct not only carried the first steam locomotives, but continues in use today to support modern trains. I need to find a way up there. I'll carefully scramble up these loose stones on the side. Up top is quite a view, and once a very special location. In 1873, the picturesque Viaduct Station Hotel stood here. Once a vacation spot, the town of Relay eventually ceased to be a major train interchange location. The hotel then became railroad employee housing and storage before being demolished in 1950. The McCartney Monument remains, an obelisk erected in 1835 by contractor John McCartney to commemorate work on the Thomas Viaduct by hundreds of immigrant workers, several who were killed during construction. The Thomas Viaduct followed the first railroad bridge in America, the Carrollton Viaduct, in 1829. This rail line also had presidential firsts. Andrew Jackson was the first sitting president to ride a train on the B&O in 1833. James Polk boarded right here in 1845 to become the first president-elect to ride a train to his inauguration. Abraham Lincoln also rode to his inauguration through Relay. The Thomas Viaduct was the site of the first telegraph line between Washington, D.C. and Baltimore in 1844. Patapsco Valley was the location for so many other firsts in the country's early development and is Maryland's first state park, being dedicated in 1907. That's I-95 as it passes over the Patapsco River. The geography of this valley and the volume of water flow make serious flooding a constant threat. Even with modest rainfall, the river is moving swiftly. Yes, it's the same river where the 2024 Key Bridge accident took place, not far downstream. All this water creates some picturesque waterfalls, even if they happen to originate from drain pipes under the railroad. From the Thomas Viaduct, a short drive along the river brings us to another unique bridge. This is the Swinging Bridge. It once connected a small mill town with the actual mill on the other side. The Orange Grove flour mill began modestly in 1856, but by 1900, it became known as the largest flour mill east of Minneapolis, producing up to 1,500 barrels of flour a day and loaded directly onto waiting rail cars.
all that quickly ground to a halt in 1905 when a fire destroyed the mill. Most of the remnants were later swept away by Hurricane Agnes in 1972. Parts of the stone retaining walls are all that's left. The swinging bridge was a commuter link. In 1900, 41 people lived across the river from the mill. 19 of those were children. Today, the bridge is a key part of a long park trail. You can really feel the bounce in this bridge as you walk across. And of course, the river down here, very wide and deep. <laughs> See, it's suspended slightly higher in the middle here. Has a little side to side sway to it. Every trip over deserves a return trip. Well, it seems bouncier going this direction. While it's not recommended for swimming, the early families here did enjoy moments when the river was calm. Here in the early 1900s is where ideas for this park began. State forester Fred W. Besley promoted this location across from the Swinging Bridge by Cascade Falls as a cool place for Baltimore residents to camp for free on hot summer days. Well, not so adventurous today to hike all the way back through the woods to see if there are more falls than that. But nice nonetheless. More stone, more water. Lots more water. At least for the moment, it's drier at camp. There's even a little sunlight and a few visitors.
well, perhaps the uh, best day of the weekend, and I need to pack up and go. But not before one more stop. I'm heading to one of the northern sections of the park to see an interesting structure that has been in use for over a century. This is a quiet portion of the Patapsco River in the Daniels area of the park, which attracts waterfowl and seems to be a good place for fishing. River is calm because it is behind a dam, one of many along the Patapsco that were built to support mills along the river. Like elsewhere, there's plenty of old stonework remnants in this area. currents in front of the dam are hard, swift, and constant. As the signs warn, swimming here can be deadly. For fish, navigating the turbulent waters is even harder. Several species spawn in the Patapsco. Young fish swim as far as 2,000 miles away into the salty ocean. When mature in a couple of years, they instinctively come back another 2,000 miles to lay eggs in the fresh water. But the dams prevent their ability to go far enough upstream to the calmer areas. Waiting for the fish to arrive. It's a goose. How do fish get past this? Enter the fish ladder. Despite the foaming, churning water, fish are able to find the ladder entrance to the left of the dam. They can then make their way through successive sections that slowly elevate them to the top of the dam. While the ladder may appear steep, the fish are able to go up and over wood dividers inside before reaching the exit grate behind the dam. A simple wheel opens and closes the water flow, allowing the ladder to be open during spawning season and closed over the winter. Remnants of the original ladder remain, including large gears that opened a drop gate to regulate water flow. The first fish ladder in Maryland was built at the Orange Grove Flour Mill in 1856. Although that dam and fish ladder are no longer there, this fish ladder remains in use. It has been modernized, but still functions as originally built.
Daniel's Dam and its fish ladder are among the many things to see at Patapsco Valley, which posts several QR codes in the park to help broaden the experience for visitors. Time to hitch and go. This quick trip sets up a second half of the year for travel. Thank you for continuing to follow the channel during this difficult time for me. I'm looking forward to soon sharing more great places to see.